Let's go to Ross Tucker, CBS, Westwood One color analyst and host of the Ross Tucker football co- podcast. Can you help us with this at all? No. You know why, Dan? <laughs> this is unbelievable, okay? So I was down in uh, Boca Raton because Saturday night for CBS, I called the UAB at FAU game. And for some reason, Dan, the only channel with no audio was Fox. (laughs) And Dan, I'm a Phillies fan who lives in central Pennsylvania and had Penn State season tickets. So watch, I watched the Phillies Astros with no audio. (laughs) Then I was watching Penn State, Ohio State, no audio. I didn't even know the kid's name. I just know that he had pretty much the best game I've ever seen a college defensive player have. He single-handedly beat Penn State. Penn State might have won if that kid didn't make all those plays. So I have, in fact, that ingested audio, the controversial ingested audio, is the first time I've ever heard that kid's (laughs) name in my life. You can check him out at at Ross Tucker, NFL. He'll be calling the Eagles Texans on Thursday night for Westwood One. Your first half of the season MVP is? Josh Allen. Yeah, I think it's pretty clearly Josh Allen. I think it's pretty close to say who's in second okay. between Patrick Mahomes and Jalen Hurts. But I think Josh Allen's been the best player in the league so far. He's incredibly impressive. No team feels like they're more dependent on one player than the Bills with Josh Allen. I know Mahomes is fantastic, but Dan, Josh Allen's their best running back. I mean, he's their best runner of the football. They are heavily, heavily reliant on him, which is good for the MVP vote. Bad because I just wonder how healthy he'll be later in the year and whether or not it impacts his ability to either be out there at all or just has his performance suffer a little bit because he's still taking more shots than he needs to. And I wondered about this when I'm watching Green Bay. I know they lost. They lost by 10. But I saw positives there that they did pretty well in the second half against Buffalo. They ran the football. I That's the team I thought we were going to see this year. Run the football, play really good defense, and then have Rodgers sprinkle in these young receivers. What do you think of the Packers moving forward based off last night? Well, they do have a good defense. I mean, sometimes they don't get the best results, but they have a lot of good players over there. I mean, Kenny Clark, Rashawn Gary, Jair Alexander, they have a very talented defense. I thought they did, for the most part, pretty well, holding Buffalo to 27 points. But the offense, 17 points is still not going to cut it. I mean, Mm. I know they ran the ball a little bit better, but it's kind of crazy to think about how far we've lowered the bar for this Packers offense with you and other people feeling okay about the fact that they scored 17 points in a primetime game. And the problem now is, Dan, they're too far behind to win that division. I mean, they're going to have to battle their fannies off just to get back and get a wild card to even have a chance. That's what's different between them and like the Bucks or the Niners, right? The Bucs and the Niners are still, in my mind, the favorites to win their divisions and talented enough and have enough of a playoff pedigree that once they do, they could do some serious damage. The Packers are going to have to really battle just to get in the tournament at all. You know, you mentioned some of these teams. Like San Francisco might have more talent, skill position-wise. Could you think of another team that has more talent at the skill position? Um, I, I, you know, you might say I'm biased because I do their preseason games on TV. The Eagles are pretty loaded, Dan. I was actually at the game yesterday, which I never get to do. After doing the pregame show, I tailgated, which is amazing. <laughs> I, I wish I could quit all my jobs and become a full-time tailgater. And then I sat in the stands with my wife, you know, AJ Brown, three touchdown catches of over 25 yards in the first half. Jalen Hurts, I just referenced earlier, is playing at an MVP caliber level, maybe just a notch behind Josh Allen. Miles Sanders having an awesome year. Dallas Goddard is a top five tight end in the NFL. Their number two receiver, Devontae Smith's a really good player. I mean, I think because the Eagles' O-line is so good and the D-line to some extent that their skill guys almost get overshadowed, but they have a really good group as well. 
Yeah, but I look at the Niners. Now you have McCaffrey there, Debo, Ayuk. You have uh, George Kittle. You, you know, it's Jimmy G where you're just not sure. It feels like if they're going to win, it's going to be because of him. And if they don't win, it'll be because of him. Is that fair? Like, how many quarterbacks do you say that about? If we win, it's probably going to be because of you not making mistakes. And if we lose, it'll be because you did make mistakes. Well, I mean, I, I think that's probably the case for like the Bills and the Chiefs with Josh Allen and Mahomes. I mean, if those guys make me, the, the difference is, I think, between those guys and Jimmy G that you're getting to, Dan, or you're getting at, is that rarely do Josh Allen and Mahomes seemingly make those mistakes, right? It feels like Jimmy G is more up and down and that the team goes with the temperature of him. And he's had some really good playoff runs and he's had some bad games, but they looked Really impressive yesterday. And the key, I think, Dan, they ran the offense through McCaffrey, right? When they had Debo, they would run the offense through him a lot. But these guys get banged up. Both of them get banged up. Now Shanahan has two guys, in case one of them is not 100%, Dan, that he can really run the offense through and make them the focal point. I mean, 18 carries, almost 100 yards, eight catches, including that awesome touchdown catch. I mean, he would be... I think McCaffrey, I would like to go through it someday and see how many teams I think McCaffrey would be the starting slot wide receiver for. Because I think it's probably at least a handful. Dallas improves to 6-2. and two, And, you know, now we're seeing a team that they can play defense. And, um, you know, eventually they'll realize that Tony Pollard is the better running back. But, hey, who am I? Um, how... If you're looking at the top three, so you go Buffalo, Philadelphia, Kansas City, I'm going to guess, is Dallas the next team on that hierarchy? Yeah, I think they are. I, I think they are, especially if they realize, like you just stated, which has been obvious to the rest of us for a couple of years, they're a better team without Zeke. I mean, they're, they're a better team when Pollard gets more snaps because of how explosive he is. I I'm very curious to see what Zeke's usage will be like when he comes back. And my guess is they'll make sure he's super duper 100% before he comes back. But the way Dak played yesterday, you know, running a little bit, some of the throws he made, when Dak's playing like that, they are the fourth best team and they could compete with the top three. I mean, they are right there because of the way their defense makes plays. I mean, Parson gets a touchdown. I think the Cowboys are right there, and I'm surprised. I did not think that they would be with some of the guys they lost, like Amari Cooper and uh, obviously Tyron Smith injury, Lyle Collins to Cincinnati, Randy Gregory. It's impressive what the Cowboys are doing. We're talking to Ross Tucker, CBS Westwood One color analyst, host of the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. We know the rule. DJ Moore knows the rule. You can't take off your helmet during a celebration. What do you do with a penalty like this? That that was poor, uh, you know, pure exuberance on his part, but an immature moment. So spontaneity took his helmet off, and you know it cost you, cost you dearly. You know what's interesting? The whole rule was designed because it didn't want to be about the guys. Every guy, as soon as they score a touchdown taking their helmet off and showing attention to themselves, drawing attention to themselves, right? Like the taunting thing is they just don't want you to do something directly to an opponent because that's a bad example for the, for the other leagues, the lower levels of football, college, high school, et cetera. It's the same thing with the helmet rule. They didn't want to start this where every time a guy scores a touchdown, they take the helmet off to get the TV time. And next thing you know, you got pop Warner kids and everybody making it about them rather than the team. The thing, the word you use I thought was interesting, Dan, is exuberance because I don't really think it was DJ Moore trying to draw attention to himself in terms of like, give me TV time. I think he was literally that excited because I've known him since he was in high school, watching him play high school football. He's never done it in college. He's never done it in the NFL. I mean, he clearly knows the rule. I think he just lost his mind. And I can tell you there have been a couple times when I've been on a football field where the energy is such that you almost like black out. I mean, it's so loud and the moment was so significant. 
that you kind of black out and it's like 10 seconds later, you're like, what the heck just happened? And I think DJ Moore had a blackout moment because he kind of realized it right away. I hated to see it called, but I knew it was going to be called because it was such an incredible play, an incredible pass. And then I thought, oh, okay. Well, are they going to take the penalty on the extra point or on the kickoff? And they yeah. wisely took it on the extra point and, and uh, sent Pinheiro back because they did their research and they realized the numbers certainly going to be in their favor that he might shank this and turned out to be correct. It's funny too, because if Pinheiro makes that kick or the kick in overtime, we're not even really talking about it that much, right? I mean, maybe you mention it casually, but it doesn't become a huge deal like it's become. I mean, I don't think Steve Wilkes has a great chance to get the long-term job and full-time job in, in Carolina anyway, but Hey, you win that game, then you've won two in a row as the interim. You start to get some momentum, then you never know. Well, these guys, you know, he wants to win, so that helps their uh, helps his situation there. If they lose, you know, they they want to get a higher pick here. You know, so I think you you're going to have that mixed emotions with some of these managerial tanking later in the season. It's great to talk to you as always. Eagles, Texans, uh, Thursday night for Westwood One. He's Ross Tucker, host of the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Thank you, Ross. Thanks, Dan.